welcome to Respect, Dance Fest weekly podcast with me, Mikaya, and my wonderful co-host, Brandy Beasley. What's up, y'all? Weekly podcast. <laughs> yes, yes, we're getting the swing of things, learning <laughs> the podcast, but it's been it's been wonderful. I love doing this. It's so interesting and intriguing to hear from dancers and their educational wisdom, their points of view, their artistic expressions. It's been interesting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love it. I, I learned a lot when we did this last year and I'm still learning and just, it makes me feel even more rooted in just dance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, what's up is, as you know, we are doing an event (laughs) this year. And, you know, kudos to that. Uh, Last year we did do an event, although everyone watched it at home. This year we're giving that opportunity for us to actually sit in the Palace of Fine Arts and watch the show on the screen. So we're taking little baby steps to get back into the theater to have a live show. So we're super excited about this. Um, Yes, I bought some brand new shoes. (laughs) Go ahead and wear your brand new shoes. Now, I know that San Francisco has been changing their mask and no mask and all this policy, but we want everyone to feel super safe because we're going to give you life with this this event. So we're going to have the masks. Everybody's going to be vaccinated. Come by. It's Sunday, the 21st of November at the Palace of Fine Arts. We're all going to watch the show in the theater and then we're going to just saunter. I used that word last time. We're going <laughs> to her into the lobby where there's going to be performances and a DJ and some snacks and lots and lots of love and reconnection. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and you're going to drink. Is that what you're <laughs> okay. She's going to drink. I will have a drink with you if that's. Yes. It. Yes. That's some, some champagne. Uh-huh. Do it. I'll bring a whole bottle just for you and me, honey. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exciting. Oh, so exciting. So, um, I'm excited to introduce our guest. Yes. Mm-mm-mm-mm. So, founded in 2016, Gnosis is a full service digital media agency. I bet you didn't think I was going to say that. And dance company that strives to push the boundaries of conceptualizing dance by combining multiple art forms with dance. And we get to take a look at their work right now. Welcome, Shadow. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Shadow. Where are you at right now? Uh, I'm back home right now. In uh, well, back home, home. I'm in London currently. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Indeed, it's our pleasure as well. So, um, what happened this year is uh, in a, a meeting that I had, a Zoom meeting I had with some of my team members with the Dance Fest, I started rattling off a lot of R words without thinking about it. I said, hey, you know, this is a time to really reinvent ourselves. This is, we need to be relevant. We need to resuscitate people. We need to be resilient. All of, And they're like, what's up with the R words? They're just flowing. And I said, I don't know, but I'm going to just roll with this for a minute. So I started making a list of R words. And then from there, I chose six dance companies from all over the world. And I said, hey, check out this list and pick one R word. And your piece that you're going to create for this world premiere will be inspired by that word. So tell everyone what R word you chose and why. Sure. So the R word I chose was resilience. The reason why I chose resilience was it's a term that I guess speaks to me the most, not only on relevant 
relevant event that happened in society currently, but also as my as a person and a black person and my personal experience. Um, so it really hit home because it was it just felt like something that was as I guess as automatic to me to be resilient as breathing because it's not really an option. I, I, this just basically the only option that you have with dealing with some things in terms of discrimination state that you can't change is to fight and, you know, uh, keep on going. Otherwise you just lose the train. So that's why I chose the word. And also because the act of dancing and the, the art of creativity and any form of, I guess, advanced skills require an incredible amount of resilience it's impossible to build you know a scale from zero to something or push through an even idea from uh, nothingness and materialize the idea um, without being resilient and pushing through with to the end of your belief system so yeah it just made sense in every aspect possible to me yes I, I am hearing that and, you know, as a person of color, completely yeah, very much identifying with like, it's just not a, it is like you said, like breathing, like you, you don't even have a choice. Like you wake up. Okay. You know, resilience is going to help get me through this day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to know about, you know, so you have this connection with this word on the list and then what, what's the process of creating your piece resilience how how did how did that process kind of um happen all right so um the conception of it um i wanted to kind of like similar to i forgot what's the method in acting um but there's a well method action that's actually the yeah. that's method <laughs> But when you basically have to run the action that you want to act in real life. So if I'm a marath I'm, I'm running a marathon, instead of acting in that, I'm actually going to run the marathon and then I'm into that motion. I mean, just that scenery feels real and I can act it out, right? And I wanted, I really, for some reason, I really wanted to, the, the process of resilience, which is tedious work. Like it's, resilience is not, is, that's why it differs from like hard work. It's something that takes stamina that takes effort, that takes strength, and that takes the will to keep on doing it regardless of the hardship that goes with it, which is different hard work, right? And I wanted the, I wanted my dancers to feel, to actually feel exhaustion, to actually feel the weight of, okay, I have to do this again, uh, okay, I really have to carry this all the way along. So the first incentive for me was to create motifs that create repetition, meaning that each person within the piece would have to go through a sun um, uh, motif and journey that would push their stamina and physique into a sun uh, stage. And it would automatically make it hard for them to be able to carry that same level of energy toward the end of the piece. So when, when you see, like when we, when you watch the, the, the piece, when you get close to the end and there's the piece starts to climax and we try to maintain that until the end. So like by the time we finished, right, we could, we actually shut that in one shot because it would it was not going to look good if we did it several times because of how, you know, during training or how people were sweating and everything. So we tried to like make it uh, for the film specifically, we tried to like make it a one shot. So like encapsulate that strain, that struggle into one thing so that they don't have to redo it again. And doesn't have to like go away with that. I felt that because I've seen that during our process is at some point when they were going through the motives and like doing the whole piece full out, you would literally crystallize the sense of resilience. Like you would crystallize them struggling, but having not, not the choice, they don't have the choice to be able to stop. So they have to pull through and do that. So that was my main focus to like to capture that, I guess, energy rather than emotion. Then um, I was really in, interested in into the new opportunity that, that hip hop theater showcase would be because it, it, it being based in digital means that we could look at things from a different perspective and maybe try to approach things that make it more engaging and interesting for the viewer. 
uh, because with I've seen a lot of like theater pieces that have been filmed, and there's a whole difference between the piece being performed and experienced live and how it's filmed. Like theater pieces that I film are poorly filmed. You don't get, you just don't get anything. You don't get anything of what you would get if you see it live. So I wanted it to be experienced in a way that would engage the viewer differently, you know, like play around with VFX, make sure that instead of having the casual or normal uh, long shot to have more of a handheld camera so that people can really engage with the motion because you're not there. So you can't really, you know, it's not palpable, right? But I wanted people to view it and to feel like they're part of a center of a journey, right? Like you're carrying through with us. So like that was my main, my main focus, capturing the essence of like what is resilience to me and to each of my dancers. So each, there's kind of like five scenes within the piece and each scene focuses on like one character in specific. So that character would have the personal version of resilience. One may be running and struggling and that's their version. Another one would be to add, um, to actually add weight uh, into the movement. So they will repeat that, the, the step of movement. Another one would be, um, how you call it, control. So like controlling the group around them and trying to nest that power because re resilience also I think it's also a play of like chaos and control so also like to like play around with those polarities that you're trying to like retain something that you don't fully have control of but doing you're doing your best to be able to do so so that was essentially the process and then I tried I basically experimented with how they perceive resilience because it was an interesting word because all of them had a different version of like what it meant to them mm -hmm. um so it was interesting to look at until i got to like get to really how they perceived it and it came it didn't come from the word it came from them moving and kind of like let you go, letting go of like the definition that they thought that they had and then in the movement tell them oh this is how i feel about you know, struggle on that. This is how my movement speak when I feel this way. So yeah, that's kind of like in a nutshell, how I looked at it. Hmm. How many dancers uh, did you use? And um, was it all your choreography or did they uh, contribute? Um, so like, I, know, I normally work with them is that we, I will structure the entire thing, but everybody has an input and you know uh add with like their own movement and everything mm. so it's collective there's collective input and everybody put a little bit of them into it yeah that's a lot of layers going into you know cr the creation of this piece just everything that you just said is just amazing the the thinking and trying to really get a sense of trying to capture all of those things in this piece and and being very aware of how it's it's not you know a theater piece and that you weren't necessarily trying to put a theater piece on to film but you were trying to capture a different kind of essence so that's that's very interesting so many layers yes yeah thank you um so uh I think that I know you originally as a freestyler. I think that's how I was introduced to you because that's my memory. You can you can you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but I feel like uh, out of uh, definitely you're known for being a freestyler as well as having your dance company. Am I correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, my main my main yeah, I'm mainly known for my freestyle capacities. Well, you know, we haven't talked a lot about freestyling in, in respect. You know, we've talked, I mean, we've a little bit, but like, I don't know if people know what it takes to actually hone that craft. Can you kind of just give us a little bit of insight? Uh, sure thing. I mean, to try to like simplify it and maybe put an analogy that makes sense to a lot of people, let's compare um, freestyling to let's 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 look at music right so the ability to choreograph is the ability to write a song right so you're able to write a song you can you could be a great songwriter but it doesn't mean that you'll be great emceeing or you have the ability to perform well but you have the capacity to write a story and that story can be told by other people 
and you're great at that. That's choreographing and the ability to like write your verse in the form of like movement and dance, right? But that ability doesn't mean that you're able to write your own words for yourself, which is very different. So choreography functions only with more than one person. You need a body of people in order to be able to convey your story in the best way. It can work as a soloist, but it's not the same because it's not it's not a a, per, a person that dances by himself or pretty much needed to be raw and organic because you're on your own. So you should speak on your own story and let us know what is the vocabulary that you're utilizing and what's the raw that you have. When it's more people, then the science of choreography makes sense because you have unison, sync, and then it's more complexity to be able to like get two bodies to make sense together, right? Um, freestyling is the ability to make up words continuously. So instead of like going back to my book and have, you know, my story on, I don't know, apples, I have a little poem on apples. So my little poem, apples, and I would read my poem and this is given and other people can read my poem. I go back to my book and I have thousands of theories, poetries, metaphors, analogies, and stories. And I can rearrange those stories in either I want to, I can make new stories, I can create new languages, and I basically have a, bl a blueprint to make things, right? From that part, that is, and this is, it's basically like going into science. There's also a reason why this is also very uh, unpopular opinion, but there's also a reason why it is a lot harder to be successful as a freestyle artist than it is as a choreographer, because there is, it is easier to write a song that's going to be, you know, like taken and copied by other people than to write your own language, right? So there's a difference. So like the choreographer writes a song, but they don't write their language. They don't. The, the people that did were really rare. They're people like pioneers and like Laban, you know, like that have invented, I guess, articulated dance in the form that become academic. But other than that, you they don't you don't create words. While freestylers create words. That's how I mean slang was created. People did not create songs and create slang. They came up organically with words. I mean that's the concept of hip hop. You take things, you mix them together and then it becomes you know a new story, a new language. And that's the that's the power of freestyle that Freestylers in dance or in music have the ability to use other sources to create. So somebody could look at a candle and rap about a candle. I could read a book about psychosis and make a free an abstract freestyle that may be induced in psychosis. That could make sense to me. That could be a probability because we have that free pen that allows us to do those kind of things. So there's, there's a quite a distinct difference between freestyling and choreographing. Choreographing is a very complex art because you know there's a lot of components that go with it, but it is still easier to write a song than create a language. Creating a language takes a lot because it's, it's, it starts from nothing. So I think those, long story short, yes, in a nutshell, those are the differences that I see in choreography and freestyle. Thank you. Processing. Yeah, I'm processing. Yes. <laughs> yes, but yes, it's, uh, yes, that is just very interesting. And I'm going to be like, get off of this interview or like be going to sleep tonight and just be like thinking about that. Um, be, you know, and I, and I think about freestyling and it is, you, you can't just kind of you know, there's no beginning freestyling class, really. Kind of, you have to kind of build, your, hone your craft. Like, right, you kind of, you have to know this language maybe or know of language in order to then go and create your own language, as you're saying. So, yes. So I want to know, what is your, like, origin story as a freestyler? Was there a moment for you where you 
you're like, oh, I, I do freestyle dance. That's, that's what works for me. That's what I do. That's my craft. So when did that kind of distinction happen for you? Um, it never really, I'm, it's a tough one because I freestyle without knowing it was called freestyle. Mm -hmm. So yes. my process, right. I started, I'm, I'm 30 now and I started dancing when I was 17. So I'm already let bloomer. And I started dancing by learning on YouTube and 17, right? So that's 12 years ago. That was when YouTube was early. So it's not YouTube that we have now. It's trash YouTube when you tap things, you don't know what's going to come out. And, you know, so I, luckily I found some videos on like how to wave and everything, but those, those are not, it's not constantly getting knowledge because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what, was, what styles were. I didn't know anything. But that's how I learned, like recording myself on the webcam, watching my videos, and I'm doing that every day for a while. And my my fan was my mom and my critic. So, you know, that was my that was my personal time chamber to practice. Then um, uh, and I was looking, the videos I was looking were not were not freestylers because I would have had to like make a specific search on you on YouTube. Because with dance, choreography came up. So I was looking at choreography and like looking at the movement and trying like you know, imitate the same movement. Because to me, that was just dance was dance. It was no choreo, no freestyle. I was made aware that I was freestyling when um, I met, like, I think a year and a half after I started dancing, I met a guy when I moved here in the UK that, uh, yeah, was a hip hop freestyler. So I was made aware of that. Oh, this chore oh, this choreography, this freestyle, what I'm doing is freestyle. And it's not even that I identified as a, as a freestyler. I just did what I did. And that's the thing that I went to focus on. And I don't know if it's also because like I'm originally, I'm French, right? But identity to me is uh, it's, it's extremely important in anything that we do. Like Oscar Wilde said, you gotta be yourself because everybody else is taken, right? So uh, finding that identity in choreography was, uh, was a choice that was illogical because you cannot be a clone, because in order to be a choreographer, you would have to be a clone, regardless if they want you on that. You know, like, best example is one of the guys that I've seen dancing at first, and which is odd, because now I spoke to him, I think a few years ago, was Ian, right? Ian, because he was a kid with Nick Demora. Those are the first videos that I've seen dancing at first, right? Everybody's a clone. And this is, this is not, that was not me. Like, identity and blueprint, to me was has always been extremely important beyond dance. Me as a person, uh, it's always something that I've not even strived towards. It's a part of like my DNA. I, I always had to make sure as a kid that I was my own person and I do things my own way. And he came out that it was always, okay, this guy was a little different. He doesn't want to do it like this. He doesn't want to run, he want to crawl. You know, it was always something uh, that was a part of me. So freestyling was just a natural direction. So it was like, I want to, I want to build my own thing the hard way and need being seen no matter, you know, how long it takes, but I want to go the hard way to, to be able to look at my product and be like, you know, Shadow, nobody helped you do anything. That's you. That's a, I think it's a lot more valuable. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think I asked you this earlier, but I did, but did I ask you another question? So how many members are in Gnosis though? In total? Yes. Okay, so in total, in... I think about 30. No way, really? Yeah, because we're we in, we in so UK, France, Italy, Japan, uh Ukraine and the US. Oh, I did I mean, yeah, I think we're more than 30 actually. I haven't counted the ads. But at least at least 15 people in India. There's like eight in the US. Yeah, we we we're more than 30. Yeah, well, I think we're 40 in total. Hey, okay. Well oh, how many people are in your piece for the dance fest then? Uh five, counting me. Five. And I know also that you have come and performed at the at the dance fest do you remember what year that was i think uh, i think that was 2016 or 2017 one of those yeah i yeah. don't know. that's why i'm asking you was it 
I don't remember. <laughs> it's a funny, I actually got a funny anecdote because a lot of people don't know, right? That in my early stage, because you know, because I reached out to you a few times before I got I got on the show, right? I sent you videos and I was like in my early process. Um, Cause I think uh, I think I sent I reached out to you at least two or three times, and then you reached out and we're like, oh cool, we we this can work. We're gonna make that on the, but yeah. Also for you guys watching, on the same process. Sometimes you gotta knock at doors a little harder until it <laughs> until it opens up. That's what I keep telling people. Um, you gotta keep trying. I have some people say, well, we applied already and we didn't get in. Okay. And you're just gonna stop, you know? Um, some really, really stellar people sometimes apply and it breaks my heart, but I can't book everyone, you know? I can't book everyone every year. And a lot of it has to do with the curation of that actual year's festival and putting a puzzle together. But you, you don't, you know, you don't stop. You continue to contact me. And I really appreciate it because I was impressed with the, just the way you move. It, you're very present in your, when I watch your freestyling, I, I just felt a deep presence of being in each moment, if that makes sense. Not being in the past, not being in the future, being right there. And it just, that's inspiring to a, a human to just get that feeling. So I'm glad you finally did come to the dance fest. <laughs> that was good to have you. Um, look, dang, that was great. We just we just wrapped this up really quick. Um, so uh, November 21st, what's happening? Uh, I don't know. Like we're gonna be at the palace watching the dance fest on the big screen, and then we're going to uh saunter into the <laughs> lobby of the palace have some little nosh nosh little drink drink little dance dance music yes it's gonna yeah. be beautiful yes and for all of you who are not in the bay area say for example you're in london you now with shadow you could still watch the show you can just go and get your ticket and watch it the show at your house. I know it's not the same, but it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And you'll see Shadow's piece called Resilience, along with five other pieces from all over the world, other words, other R words. And um, the world premiere of all of that is happening either at the palace or at your house on November 21st. So go to sfhiphopdancefest.com. Thank you, Shadow, for, att <laughs> for attending and talking with us today. It was really, really nice to talk to you. And um, everyone, we hope to see you soon. Much love, much respect. Until next time, bye. Bye, thank you, guys. <laughs>